Throughout time, rivers have been influential in shaping society. Most of them have shaped history by flowing water, but very few have molded history the way the Cuyahoga River did. It influenced history by burning. Although the Cuyahoga River in Cleveland, Ohio had burned before, due to growing environmental awareness and increased political action, the timely fire on June 22, 1969 generated a turning point for change in protecting national water quality. Industrial growth happened quickly in Cleveland, Ohio in the early 20th century. Factories, steel mills, manufacturing plants, and refineries started popping up near the river. These industries often dumped waste directly into the river. The laws in place at the time permitted them to do so. Even the sewage system flowed down the Cuyahoga. In 1962, Rachel Carson wrote a book entitled Silent Spring, which talked about the damaging effect of pesticides. It raised public awareness regarding human activity damaging the environment. Then, on January 28, 1969, an oil well blowout in Santa Barbara spewed more than 3 million gallons of oil into the Pacific Ocean. The oil reached over 35 miles of beaches off the California coast and brought more national attention to the human abuse of the environment. The images of oil harming and killing thousands of animals struck Americans, receiving enough media attention to prompt a visit from President Richard Nixon. Silent Spring and the oil spill were crucial in awakening American environmental consciousness. On the morning of June 22, 1969, the fire broke out on the Cuyahoga River, likely started by an overhead train spark. The fire lasted only about 24 minutes, but the repercussions of this fire were far-reaching. By the time the local news arrived, they only caught a picture of the melted railway. However, Time Magazine published an article after the fire with a striking picture. but. The picture in the magazine is from the fire in 1952, which was much bigger and caused much more damage. The article was pivotal in adding to the national outcry for environmental change. During this time, the mayor of Cleveland was Carl Stokes, and he played a major role in making the Cuyahoga River fire a turning point in history. He was the first African-American mayor of a major U.S. city and used his position to draw attention to how environmental problems negatively affect communities of color. The morning after the fire, on the banks of the Cuyahoga, he called a local press conference to show how important it was to clean the river. He understood that a larger regulatory body was needed for change. The suburbs around Cleveland didn't think it was their responsibility to help clean the pollution. Also, those who ran the companies along the river didn't want government control over how to spend their money in order to lessen pollution. The previous mayor, Thomas A. Burke, had formed the oil study group to try to clean up the river. The study group used a little vessel known as Putzfrau meaning cleaning woman in German, to vacuum up debris and oil daily. So these local actions were happening, but Mayor Carl Stokes helped bring national attention to this pollution. A kind of activist um, mindset, which uh, was one of the great gifts of the civil rights movement, um, I think encouraged m many young environmentalists to say, hey, we need, we need to make a change now. And uh, the way that we do that is that we organize, that we tell these stories, that we spread these images, um, and, and we force politicians to uh, pass new laws. Stokes' experience in fighting for civil rights helped him realize elevating water pollution to the national conversation would affect change despite opposing forces. After the fire, in 1970, he testified before Congress in Washington, D.C.
advocating for federal aid to clean pollution and enforce stricter laws. The far-reaching effects of the Cuyahoga River fire were seen in cartoonist drawings which pokes fun at the pollution. Even a famous songwriter, Randy Newman, wrote a song entitled Burn On referring to the Cuyahoga. Burn on, big river. Burn on. As a result of these factors, the time was right for legislative action. On January 1, 1970, President Nixon signed the National Environmental Policy Act into a law which prioritized the environment. In his State of the Union address, he said, The question of the 70s is, shall we surrender to our surroundings, or shall we make our peace with nature? and begin to make reparations for the damage we have done to our air, to our land, and to our water. Shortly after, on April 22nd, the first Earth Day took place. This was less than a year from the last burning of the Cuyahoga River. More than 20 million Americans participated in the activities for Earth Day. This proved that American people believed that the environment needed protection. At this time, the first pictures of Earth were taken from space. These became a symbol of the environmental movement. On December 2nd, 1970, President Nixon created the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, also referred to as the EPA. The EPA consisted of federal agencies to enforce regulation protecting the environment. In its first month, on December 31st, EPA sent national standards for air quality through the Clean Air Act. Its purpose was to protect public health by limiting particle pollution. The Federal Water Pollution Control Act was amended in 1972 and is commonly known as the Clean Water Act. Its goal is to restore and maintain national water quality by preventing pollution. Today, it is still the primary way we protect our nation's waters. According to the National Wildlife Federation, the Clean Water Act keeps 700 billion pounds of pollutants out of our waters annually and has doubled the number of waters safe for fishing and swimming. The Cuyahoga River fire is a turning point because it brought national attention to the price of polluting our environment. That's why it was important. The Cuyahoga River was this turning point and people were starting to look at our impacts on the environment a little differently than we had before. The Ohio EPA sees removing the Gorge Dam as the main goal to restore the Cuyahoga River to its full potential. From carrying sewage in contrast to carrying kayakers, the comeback of the Cuyahoga is stupendous. However, there is still work to be done. Throughout the U.S., we still see pollution. According to EPA, there is almost 70,000 bodies of water throughout the nation that do not meet the water quality standards. There is the argument that it costs too much. Aaron Yao, a member of the Science Advisory Board to the EPA, stated, So the biggest argument is that it costs too much and that if you implement this strict regulation, you're going to bankrupt the economy. But if you actually look at history over the past 50 years, the economy has not gone bankrupt. Globally, the U.S. has influenced water quality standards by sharing research about water pollution. American efforts in developing new water treatment technologies and establishing effective water management practices have been recognized and adopted worldwide. In conclusion, with the loss of the federal government, social pressure, and economic support, the Cuyahoga River fire was a turning point in history resulting in the Clean Water Act and the formation of the Environmental Protection Agency. In 2019, the Cuyahoga River was declared the River of the Year by the American Rivers. The article stated, the story of the burning river galvanized the public and created a turning point in the fight for clean water and healthy rivers. The Cuyahoga River fire influenced history and truly rose from the ashes.